Howdy folks! In this video we're going to learn how to place sprites wherever the mouse is, so it's going to follow the mouse. Alright, and we're going to do that for... Oh, on a humorous note, lesson learned for me, it's not a reticule, it's a reticle. <laughs> a reticle is little crosshairs in a, a sniper scope. And a reticule is a woman's handbag. <laughs> so, but I'm not going to change it because it's funnier this way. But just wanted to throw that out there that I was wrong about that. All right. So uh, we're going to go down here to sprite position, and we'll start with the hero. So, how is he going to move? Um, I'm thinking he's going, his vertical motion is going to be captured by throttle, which is actually not going to be him moving up and down in the window, it's going to be background stuff and everything around him moving down. So, really, his, his dy is always going to be zero, just his dx is going to be positioned by the mouse, and that's side to side. Alright, and it could be even like just him staying right smack dab in the middle of the screen always, and the everything moving left, right, up, down to indicate that he's moving. But I'm not going to do it that way. So, his hero DX is going to be wherever the mouse is, and remember built-in variables for mouse X and mouse Y. The game, the, the program knows exactly where the mouse is, and it's put in variable mouse X. And subtract 16, because the her hero is exactly 32 pixels wide, and you want it to line up with the mouse and not be in the corner. And um, let's also s subtract hero x. And so this is basically a difference. I'll put this in parentheses to make it more obvious. Um, so we're changing by this amount. Wherever he's currently at is subtracted from wherever the mouse is, and that makes up the difference. Hero dy is nothing. Zero zilch zip nada. Next, I'm going to add a series of conditions to check which way he's going, and then I will change the image of the sprite to the appropriate image to make it look like he's actually going in that direction. Alright, so if hero dx is greater than I could say zero, but when he's moving really slow, I'll have him facing forward-ish. So if it's greater than two pixels, then print number one, sprite image, hero. And if it's greater than zero, then he's moving to the right, so his image will be hero r1. Okay, conversely, if he's moving to the left, if it's less than negative two, then print number one, sprint, sprite, image, hero, hero, L, one. And now if he's, if he's, um, moving forward, if hero, dx is greater than or equal to negative 2 and hero dx is less than or equal to 2 and remember uh, you always want to include everything so don't, I wouldn't want to just do that because then what if it is exactly negative 2 which could happen so we want to do that to make sure we cover all our bases. So if we're between those two and and the throttle is greater than zero, 
then print number one, sprite, image, hero, um, hero, s1. And I'm just going to copy this and paste it because only one thing is changing for the next one. And that is, if it is zero, which could happen, then there's no flames coming out the back. And my one of my ideas is for the shadow. When it gets too close, he zaps you and takes away all your powers for steering and for shoosting. And you are stuck, going straight forward for a few seconds, which obviously could be pretty dangerous because you can't evade enemies or obstacles, and you could die. Alright. Um, next, we actually make the change evident in its x and y position. So hero x is equal to whatever it was last time, plus hero dx hero y, and here's where we place hero y, let's say window height divided by 2, plus hero dy, which we really don't need to do because it's 0, but I'm just doing it anyway, just because, don't ask why. Print number 1, sprite xy, now we actually place the sprite where we said it is, hero x, hero y, and we're done. Now, let's place the reticle. But I'll explain it this way anyway, because it's laughable. Print number one. Sprite xy. Reticule. Mouse x. Minus 16, because that one is also 32 pixels wide. And mouse y minus 16 and we're done. Now here's my plan for keeping these two on top of everything. Whenever we add new sprites that need to be in the background, I'm going to say at the very end, go sub raise foreground. And what that's going to do is remove our sprite for hero and reticule and place it again. <laughs> Which sounds kind of dangerous, but it keeps track of where they are, it keeps track of their speeds or whatever, because all those variables are taken care of. We're just raising the foreground. And if you are an expert, just basic programmer, and you know of a better way to do this, please let me know, and I will give you a virtual cybernet hug. Alright. So, remove sprite hero. Oh man. And then we add sprite hero. Oh, somewhere. Hero S0, hero S1, hero L1, hero R1, and debris. I added debris because, well, instead of just removing the sprite altogether and then adding a sprite called debris, I'm just going to change the sprite image to debris when you blow up. And we'll do the same for reticule, remove, sprite, reticule. Sounds stupid saying it now. Add sprite, reticule. Um, reticule, R, reticule, G. And return. Return to base. We're done with that. I think I'm going to try and click play. There might be some errors because we're early on in the programming process, but we can try debugging them. Ready and click. Oh, whoa! It's working! It's working! Now, 
I'm hitting W right now, and obviously nothing's happening except that some variable is changing. But that variable doesn't do anything yet because we haven't gotten to moving the stars in the background yet. As you can see, if you look really close, these stars are mirrored. <laughs> but that mirroring look will go away as soon as we start moving, because the foreground stars can move at a different rate than the background stars. Alright, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for more awesomeness.